This course is broken down into these sections here. First up, we have the introduction to live sound, where we'll learn the broad strokes of what a sound system does and what your role is also made up of. Then we'll go ahead and dive into what sound is, uh, things like understanding hertz and dBs, uh, reflections, basically all the stuff that should be boring, but we'll try to make it fun, okay? Uh, I mean, this is basic uh, theory that you really should know to make the rest of the course make sense. There, as you can imagine, there's an endless amount to know here, but I've boiled down all the subjects down to the least you need to know in order to succeed. Uh, next, we'll look at the equipment. Take basically a bird's eye view of all the gear and what it does, you know, what a mixer does, wireless systems, amps, speakers, uh, wiring effects, and all the goodies that kind of make up a sound system. Even if you're hiring an outside person to put together a system, uh, this section will really help you understand the basics so you'll know how to kind of speak all of the lingo to that outside contractor. Then we'll take a tour of the stage and see how to set it all up, including mic selection and placement, setting up monitors, uh, all that kind of good stuff there. Then we move into the mixing console and learn it from back to front so that you'll never be intimidated by a big mixing console again. Now, a big section is going to be the troubleshooting section, and that's really kind of what separates the men from the boys, so to speak. In a recording environment, if something goes wrong, then you just ask the band to take five while you sort it all out. In a live situation, <laughs> you've got to be on top of it and know intuitively how to zero in on any problem that comes up. I'll teach you how to have a sixth sense in terms of troubleshooting. Um, now, the mixing section will be a large part of this course, and this is where the rubber really hits the road. We'll learn how to blend levels, uh, use EQ, control dynamics, also use effects. Also, the important area of monitor mixing to help the musicians hear themselves uh, up on stage. And finally, a section on recording and duplication for those of you who are uh, maybe in the church community, uh, or maybe you're a sound guy for um, maybe conferences and so on and need to hand out or sell those recordings. We'll learn all about it in that section. As you can see, we have a lot to cover, but I really recommend taking a little bit at a time using the navigational features of this course to zero in on the parts that are really of interest to you at that time. So I guess it would be fair to ask, who's this guy and why should I trust that he has anything to say that's of value? Well, I've been doing this for a long, long time. I've been teaching musicians and audio people how to use this stuff uh, and do all this stuff for over 25 years. And I've been in environments where I've worked with the very best in the business. Nothing teaches like doing it. I've done a lot of live sound. I've worked out on the road with massive acts like uh, Michael Jackson, Phil Collins, uh, Whitney Houston, Diana Ross. And I've also run the sound at my local church for years. I've had the privilege of mixing thousands of events and you know you kind of get to learn what works and what doesn't. My hope is that I can break it all down, break everything down and you know basically everything I've learned looking over the shoulders of incredible audio engineers that I've worked with. Uh, to be honest I'd have to be an absolute idiot to have been working in this business for so long with some of the biggest names in the business and not learn a thing or two, right? Do you trust me? Okay, my hope is that by the end of this course, you'll know them too, and you'll be an excellent audio engineer. That's absolutely the goal. So let's get started. So let's break down the basics of a sound system, and this is the smallest sound system I could uh, think of to demonstrate this. And believe it or not, any sound system or PA system is basically the same as this guy here. Now, by the way, PA system is just an old school way of, uh, it's a short, as an acronym for public address system. I'll say PA or sound system from now on. And it's basically this. We have sound source, in this case I have two. I have a vocal mic and a guitar coming out of this cable here. Comes into this little mixer. This mixer mixes them together, changes their tone and whatnot. Sends it out to a power amp inside here and then out to a speaker here. The purpose is to take these two sound sources here, mix them together, tweak their sound a little bit, then amplify it and send it out on its way so the audience can hear that. Believe it or not, the biggest PA you can think of is basically doing the same thing. A PA system is taking all the inputs from stage, 
running them into a mixer that has EQ and effects, then running that through an amp rack, then into a pile of speakers. That's the basic structure of a PA system. And there are a few other things like monitor sends and crossovers and things, but this is pretty much it in a nutshell. Sound sources going into a mixer, and maybe some effects, then out to the amp and speaker combination. So the next time you go to a big concert, remember that for all those dozens of trucks of equipment that put together that massive sound system, this is really all that's going on. Sound sources going into a mixer and those sources being mixed, EQ'd and affected, then sent out to the amp and then speakers. Note the flow of signal here from our source into the mixer, then amp and speakers. I really want to get that into your consciousness that that is the flow because then troubleshooting will just make a lot of sense. Like imagine this for example, if I brought this up and I could, I could hear my guitar, but I couldn't hear my vocal mic, then I could make the assumption that from the amp and the speakers on out in the mixer, everything from the mixer, amp and speakers is fine because I can hear my guitar here. But if I can't hear then that there must be something wrong between here and here, right? So maybe it's a bad mic cable or I say a bad microphone. Oh, actually, there's a switch on the top here. If I turn that on, there you go. So I just wanted to get you uh, kind of used to this simplified idea of signal flow because it will make a lot more sense and really help with your troubleshooting later on.